contract. Flight information. Hump the Virgin. Hump the Virgin dry. Virgin America, first class flight. I feel like I lost my brain somewhere. Everything has been a whirlwind. New York, LA, JFK, LAX, LAX, JFK, JFK, LAX, LAX, JFK. Los Angeles, New York. I've never seen her reality television show before. But the Long Island medium is in the seat in front of me. She is staring out the window. I wonder what she is thinking about. The flight attendant comes by and I ask for another Bloody Mary. <clears throat> this weekend is going to be total bedlam. My stomach is in knots. The next few days will go by fast and feel like an eternity at the same time. I wish this flight was longer than 5.5 hours. It's a moment of true peace and quiet, a total contrast of this upcoming weekend. It has been over a year since my first trip to Los Angeles with Jen O'Brien Media. And now I feel totally stuck in this job. I am now part of this grotesque machine. The models will have fun. Weird weekend. But not me. This is a game I play for money. It's a competition not of tickling, like Jane says, but a competition of who can manipulate who. At any given moment, you are being manipulated. Or you're having to lie and manipulate to help yourself. I down the rest of my Bloody Mary and I turn over to my side, close my eyes, and drift off to sleep. Next time I open them, I'll be in Los Angeles. No. Actually, I'll be in Jane's world. Here I am, the Weston Bond adventure. This place has become so familiar to me. Time freezes and none of this feels quite entirely real. But this giant monolith helps to mute all the chaos. The 35 stories are a dizzying, overwhelming labyrinth. Perfect cage to incarcerate the crazy chaos of a tickle shoot. Walking through the lobby, I realize I have several missed calls and a voicemail. Hello, this is Kevin Colley. Um Give me a call. Bye. When Kevin is in shoot mode, he's even crazier than normal. He loves the chaos. In fact, he often amplifies it. My job is to try and keep some semblance of organization within the chaos. I handle the 30,000 that goes towards the models in the photo studio. The catering, setting up the bed, or any errands or tasks that are needed at any given moment. I guess in a way I've become a production assistant. But every shoot, Kevin handles it like he's going to war. He knows I've landed and he's very impatient for me to get within his grasp. I know where he is though, before I even get here. In the same parlor suite we usually have as the bunker of operations. I head towards the elevator. During the next couple days, I'll be taking these glass elevators a lot. Up and down, down and up. It's a weird sensation. I'll be running around all over the place. These rides are a pregnant pause during the madness. 
An ear popping elevator ride shot up 28 floors to our base of operations. I knock on the door, but it's already pop, propped open, so I walk right in. I enter the first room connected to the parlor suite. Hello? No answer, that's strange. I walk up to the window and take in my change of setting. You're not in NYC anymore, it's winter back home. It is nice to escape to Los Angeles, actually, a place I really have no connections in. Makes it easier to do this kind of work. I wonder where Kevin is. I hear the other door open at the end of the parlor suite and I turn around. Hi Adam, how was your flight? Good to see you. We gotta hit the ground running. There's gonna be three models arriving any minute now. One already got here before you. I need you to remember to get the phone number and the room number of every guy. It's gonna be a big one, 16 models. I also need you to run to the bank and get 30,000 cash. Are you hungry? We can order something to pick up. You need a coffee? Kevin is in total shoot mode, full chaos form. His eyes are beady and staring at me intensely. It feels as though he is taking a photo with his eyes. I sigh and try and get my wits about me. I'll just make some hotel room coffee real quick and I'll run to the bank. I get 30000 in cash out of the fat bastard LLC business account. Shove the huge wad of cash in my pocket. I then go to 7-Eleven to pick up several cold sparkling waters, as per Kevin's request. He hasn't had a drink in 35 years. This is all he drinks. I get back and the parlor suite is already filling with arrival par participants. Most of the guys are new this round, maybe one or two returners. They all look rather nervous and weary of whatever situation they allow themselves into. Setting up for the day started early, 7.30 a.m. awakening. Grocery shopping for the catering, helping loading the van with equipment. A lot more goes into tickling shoes than you would think. All fresh new Adidas uniforms for the participants. Some are specifically requested to wear certain colors. Ones that are not assigned by Jane or decided by me. First thing are the tickle talks. We set each model individually on camera to answer a series of questions about tickling. They must talk for 15 whole minutes just about being ticklish. Are you ticklish? Most participants struggle to fill 15 minutes of just tickle talking. Some have the gift of gab and are able to ramble on and on. Others can barely make it five minutes. It's only three questions. How ticklish are you? Now that the boring tickle talks are done, it's time for me and the other assistants to set up the bed. 
The other assistant and I both started as participants once, but we somehow found ourselves now working for the company regularly. Jane calls him the tickle bug, because he looked like a bug when being tickled. He's a really angry guy and wants to be an actor. He was also once a part of the Children of God cult. As the models switch between being tickled and being ticklers, the tickle bug assistant and I have to clean up and tie down each new tickler. They must be tickled for 15 minutes straight. There's a lot of waiting, though. It's hot in the studio. The tickle bug assistant is pretty bored. He started working for this company before I did. He carved a small head out of veggie with his mouth. Jane is never here on shoots, but her presence is looming. Text messages and emails are always coming through, asking about how the day is going and who is the most ticklish. Break you down to build you back up. Arriving back at the Bonaventure, pretty exhausted from a long day of shooting, mentally depleted from listening to fake laughter for six to eight hours. Part of me wants to just go up to my comfortable hotel bed and just pass out but that would just mean tomorrow will come faster, which is just another day of stressful labor. Another day of hours of fake laughter. It really makes you feel like you're in an insane asylum. Kevin had something he had to do tonight, which is very rare. I usually have to keep him company and deal with a sundry of small things, like getting him more sparkling water, or just going out to a nice dinner talking about the craziness that are these crazy monthly trips into the tickle dimension. I usually don't mind putting up with Kevin's craziness because despite infinite amounts of sexual jokes at my expense, we have, a, we have really good dinners, he pays, he makes sure I'm comfortable whilst dealing with more logistics. I decided to make use of this unusual freedom and wander around the hotel a bit with one of the models I semi-get along with on the shoot. Doesn't happen often that I can even stand conversation with any of them, but this guy is pretty chill. Let's go to the rotating bar at the top of the hotel, the short but muscular model suggests. I say okay and we head towards the elevator.
I kind of love this bar on the top of the Bonaventure. It rotates ever so slightly. The drinks are strong and come in special edition cups you can take away. We take a seat in the nearly empty bar. We order our first round of drinks. The sun is setting. It's almost romantic. Can I ask you boys a question? What are you doing here? Staying in this hotel, drinking these cocktails on a Friday night. The model I was hanging out with started hitting on this pretty woman drinking alone in the bar. She was probably 10 years older than him, but he had a couple drinks in him, so he was being forward. She seemed a bit amused and started buying us a couple rounds of drinks. She appreciates the she appreciates the guys the young guys flirtations, but she has focused her conversation on me. Even saying to the model, "I like your friend. He seems more real than you." That sobers up the model quite a bit. After letting the model play coy to the woman about the real reason he is in Los Angeles, I decide to tell her everything. Why we are here. The truth of the situation. We don't know who is paying us, but we are all flown out here to tickle each other. She listens as I explain the whole thing, her face becoming more serious. Listen, I'm not judging you boys on what you're doing. But even if they are paying you a couple thousand dollars, they're using you, your body, your identity. They now have it crystallized and for their use, however they see fit. You don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be selling your identity, your image away to anyone. She is looking right at me as she is saying all this. After a bit more conversation, we have to go. It's almost money time and I have to make my way back to the parlor suite. I have to do payroll and divvy up all the model's money. There's also the ritual. We start to say our goodbyes to this stranger lady. She has a chuckle and a cheek kiss with the model and then she pulls me in for a really tight hug. She whispers into my ear. Please, please promise me you'll take care of yourself. I promise her I will. This random woman's concern for me has touched me, but... I do want to take care of myself, but I can't. I won't. I'm too lost in the machinery, in this game. I can't say no to the money. I can't leave. This weekend has been a tiring one, and I just want to... I want to get it done and enjoy the ritual. A bit intoxicated, I make my way towards the ATM machine across the street. I have to get up. I have to get a bit more money for the participant payments. Back at the parlor suite, the models are piling in. Contracts are signed, IDs checked, and also any final requests from Jane must be completed. Like the models from other countries singing their national anthem on camera for her. So we have reached the end, the truly best part of the weekend. The whole photo shoot is done. All that's left is payday and the ritual celebration. Johnny Walker Blue, King George V. Bottles of Crystal. I gotta separate everyone's paycheck into envelopes. Laurel hydrate, Laurel hydrate, and pizza. You seem utterly obsessed with money. Beyond even the threshold of the average child of Abraham, I have seen very nice people destroyed by a misguided passion without taking the time to see what's need to pursue it, freely from safety and ruin, slightly substance enhanced to get my thinking into the more creative realms of its capacity. It's very important, Adam.
because I think that life is a learning experience, that life is a learning experience, that life is a learning experience, because I think that life is a learning experience, the learning experience, the learning experience, the learning experience. The learning experience.